Hey folks, this is your host, the one, the only, Thrifty Gamer 83 bringing you my take on the retro community in Maine. Growing up in the 80s and 90s, video gaming was just a prime example of expert marketing by various companies. Nintendo, Sega, to a lesser extent, even the... Neo Geo, which I so desperately want, and still want to this day. As well, there was also the Commodore 64, with a vast library and intensive catalog of games. This was the 80s and 90s we're talking about. This was, for me, the best era of gaming. To really see so many games and really to see what Nintendo or Sega could do in the marketplace. As a gamer, it was an enter it was an interesting era to grow up in. You had various rental shops you could go to. For me it was Firehouse Video in Wilton, Maine. And, to a lesser extent, the Shop and Saves around Farmington and Jay. Although, the Shop and Saves are now called Hannaford's at this time. It was a time when there were also specialty rental shops like Sounds Easy Video. We didn't really go to a Blockbuster until the early 2000s, seriously. And by then, everything had changed. Sounds Easy had pretty much shut down. Movie Gallery had come in. Movie Gallery has since closed. And as well, Blockbuster has since closed. But for me, the memories of just going to these little rental shops, even a little one near my parents' house home in Lisbon, that was just something you don't have nowadays. Nowadays what you have is digital on demand but back when I was a child you had rental shops. Now as rental shops have pretty much reached their lifetime and expired what has happened is in the retro gaming community stores have sold off their retro games collection which means it's much easier and more viable to obtain games for classic consoles. It doesn't have to be rare. Let's be honest. It just has to be a game that you enjoyed. A personal preference. I am so happy to have gone on so many yard sales and gotten games like Dino Crisis 1 and 2 for the original PlayStation as well getting a Commodore 64 Complete in box for five dollars. Complete in box and working, of course. Working, that's always a good thing. Yes, it's working. No, I haven't had time to set it up officially yet, but I will set it up sometime. The retro gaming community is just, you have to understand, in Maine, for me, there's different stores you can go to. There's different game exchanges. There's really their family owned and operated businesses and you can go right in and feel right at home. There's always a warm smile. There's always warmth when you go in there. They are gamers. You are a gamer. They understand what you're looking for. It's those little things that make you feel so comfortable and at home. You just really feel feel that sense of belonging when you go to these little shops like Game Zone or Video Game Exchange. This is a shout out to those guys in Maine. Auburn, Maine is where Game Zone is. Mel is a great guy. The Video Game Exchange is a family owned business. It usually operates in Augusta, Maine. You can find a lot of great titles there, a lot of hit games. They do do some yard sailing, just branching out into some of the uh, mega Cumberland County Fair type sales that they do here in Maine. 
it's just something that you have to look forward to. The summer season, the video game hunts, and as well, you also have the winter gaming hunts. Now that smaller chain family stores are becoming viable for retro gaming, you also have that as an aesthetic. You can see just how much this means to me in my community to actually have these stores, to actually have people who you can talk to about the retro community, and that that means a great deal to me. I actually remember when I first got Mega Man 2, me and my older brother stayed up for a day just to beat it. It was a hard, intense game, and of course we had the Nintendo Power. However, the issue of Nintendo Power we had did not cover Wily's Castle. We were pretty much, in a word, we were pretty much screwed. And for the retro community, we all know that. We all feel that. We all wish games were still that hard, and yet, and yet, games are not that hard. And in here in and here in Maine, I find it just amazing that you can find so many things for older consoles that you really need. You can find Nintendo wires for Nintendo 64 or Super Nintendo at places like a Goodwill. You can actually find consoles. Consoles! At a goodwill, I actually got my Light Sixer Classic Atari 2600, and yes, it works. I've checked it. No busted caps, resistors. It functions fine, and it really just blows my mind. I've actually gone through and done the goodwill by the pound shops, and I've actually found a working original Sega Genesis. Oh, man, it just gets me so pumped up to go out there and hunt for retro products, for retro gaming. I've actually got something which I consider my good luck charm. I've got an old, the, uh, old Intel MMX Pentium 2, the, uh, little guy in the green jumpsuit with the, uh, screen face. Yeah, I've got one of those. It's been it's been a pretty good help to me over the years in building my retro gaming collection. Of course, as I've said before though, in Maine, the retro gaming community I found people will ask you, "Are you going to take are you going to buy these games after you got me down to 50 cents on them for something like say Spider-Man 2 for the GameCube, F-Zero GX, are you going to turn around and sell them? And my answer is, no, I won't turn around and sell them because I love these games. I've been hunting for these games. These games stay in my collection, they stay on my shelves, they stay in my cabinets. That's just how it is in Maine. So you just don't haggle or dicker someone down and they don't really appreciate people who do that style of business. In Maine, I've always found it's good to tell people, well, I got you down to this price, I haggled with you, don't worry, I dickered you down, yes, but I'm not going to sell it. That's what matters. That and the fact that so many people I've just shaken hands with after they've given me great deals. I remember getting Resident Evil Code Veronica X, Devil May Cry 1, 2, and 3, The Collectors, for a little under $5. I got Resident Evil 4 for the PlayStation 2, and I've gotten my extensive Nintendo and Sega collection mostly for prices such as 5 or $10. That means I've gotten Super Mario Bros. 1, 2, 3, Punch-Out, and a variety of others for under $20. I've gotten them for 10 or 15 That's a collection. That's 10 or 15 games 
for a dollar. And I respect people who actually ask, are you going to turn around and sell this? Because it's that moment of truth for a retro game collector, for a retro game enthusiast that means so much to me. Just to be honest, point blank, say, no, I'm not going to sell this. There's a reason why I'm not going to sell this game. I usually tell them it's for a web show. Truth be told, a lot of the games I remember playing with my older brother. And that's the real reason why I collect and enjoy collecting so much. It puts aside that sense of loss. And it gives me something that just cannot be replaced. It sparks and evokes so many memories. And you can really tell that people have respect for those in the retro gaming community when they ask you point blank are you going to sell or trade this and you say no and in Maine that's the values we have and that we're raised with it's one of those things I just can't really put my finger on I'm not gonna turn around and sell these games I'm not gonna turn around and trade these games for me as a collector it's a craft and an art, a skill to be able to collect these games, to be able to luck into finding different deals. As I said before, when all of the video rental places, mom and pop stores started shutting down, they offloaded their inventories and they're still offloading them. Sometimes they do personal yard sales. And other times, they just flat out donate it. That's just amazing to really see that in effect. Being a gamer is something that means you can enjoy these games and enjoy the memories. And you can look back on when you first played this title or that title. I remember... When we got the first household Nintendo, the first Nintendo, mind you, my sister had it for a few months up in her room. She didn't really play it, so we brought down the Nintendo, we played Super Mario Brothers, and it was magical to me. I had played a Commodore 64 until the Nintendo was finally brought downstairs, and my jaw dropped. It was so amazing. It was so fun. My older brother would come over and we would play Tecmo Super Bowl and we would just have a ball with the Super Mario Brothers games. When you look at that, when you feel that kinship with gamers, that emotional attachment folks, I gotta say, there's nothing in the world like it. There's nothing that you can put into words how much it means to be a retro collector, how much it means to be in Maine, to enjoy seeing the sights and sounds, and then <laughs> do some collecting. And a lot of the times you'll find some oddities. A lot of the times the best thing you'll see is the views in Maine. Alright folks, rant, rave, love, hate, click that subscribe button, you're keeping my show on the air. Have a good one!